Good morning, and thank you for joining us for this morning's children's reading series. We're happy to bring you two books this morning. Before we get going, we'll tell you a little bit about our sanctuary. Project Chimps is a 236 acre sanctuary in the Blue Ridge Mountains created specifically to help chimpanzees formerly used in medical research. Our mission is to provide lifelong exemplary care to chimpanzees retired from research. Since 2016, we've been transporting chimps from the New Iberia Research Center in Louisiana here to the Blue Ridge Mountains. And this is a picture of our habitat. We call it the peach tree habitat. We have different houses or villas that the chimps live in. We have our cedar tree villa, our Dorothy, Joe, and Tilly villa, the Chimps Ahoy villa, our Harmony villa, and the McGrath family chateau, which is where two families of chimpanzees live. And this is a little picture inside the chimpanzees villas. On the left is our vet, Dr. Silver, and she is interacting with some of the chimps in the cedar tree villa. And on the right is one of our facility staff, Lucas, who's building some new climbing structures for the chimps who live in our chateau. This is Joseph in our kitchen with some yummy sweet potatoes. We try to provide a nice wide variety of foods for the chimps, all sorts of different healthy fruits and vegetables and beans and nuts. And they even get a special chimp chow. We have different types of daily enrichment that we give the chimps. On the left is our caregiver Beverly who created a fun little spinning wheel where we can put different yummy treats inside each of those bottles and the chimps have to get a stick or some type of a tool to get in there and sample those tasty treats. And on the right is one of our termite mounds. And inside the termite mounds, we use honey and applesauce and yummy things like that. And as you see, the chimps can find a tool or a stick to get down there and sample some of that yumminess. We also have some fun opportunities that you can have an opportunity to come and see the chimps at one of our events and field trips. And of course, right now we're even doing virtual field trips. Without further ado, we have our first reader for this morning. Sue worked as a assistant headmaster and elementary principal at an Episcopal school in Atlanta for 22 years. She's been volunteering with us for about a year and a half. She loves animals and all varieties of all varieties and simply being outdoors. And she especially likes hiking and gardening. Sue is going to read us The Watcher by Jeanette Winter. Good morning, everyone. We're so glad that you're here that you have joined me and Buttercup, who's going to be listening to me read as well. If you were here a couple of weeks ago, Miss Betty taught us that this is how chimps say hello. So again, hello, and we're so happy that you were with us. Let me get started with the watcher. Jane, Jane, where are you? Jane, can you hear me? Everyone had been searching for hours and hours for little Valerie Jane Goodall. Then from the hen house, Jane came running to her mother shouting, I know how an egg comes out. At five years old, Jane was already a watcher. Jane watched all the animals in her world, big and small, earthworms, insects, birds, cats, dogs, and horses. Jane quietly watched an English robin at her window for days and weeks. She saw him come close, closer, 
then into her room to eat some crumbs off of her bed. When spring came, the robin even built a nest in Jane's bookcase. Perched high in her favorite beech tree, Jane read about Dr. Doolittle talking to the animals and Tarzan living with the apes in Africa. She wanted to go to Africa too and talk to the animals and live with the apes. When Jane's school days were over, she worked and saved to buy a ticket to Kenya. She hid her earnings under the living room rug for safekeeping. Crossing the ocean, Jane stayed on deck and watched the waves, even when the wind blew. She saw all the different blues and greens of the sea and fish that glowed through the dark water. As Jane stepped onto dry land, she closed her eyes in joy Jane looked for work with animals. A famous scientist, Louis Leakey, was looking for someone to watch and study chimpanzees to help understand the animal who is most like us. Would Jane be interested? Yes, she would. Jane tra traveled to the place in Tanzania where the chimps lived. Gombe, I wanted to learn things that no one else knew. Uncover secrets, she wrote. She set up camp far from where any humans lived. That first night, Jane lay awake listening to new sounds the croak of a frog, the hum of crickets, the laugh of a hyena, the hoot of an owl, and looking up at the stars, she knew she was home. I think that was very brave. I'm afraid I might be a little scared. As at dawn, Jane walked into the forest. Up high, she found a peak to watch from. Every day, she climbed to the peak to look for chimps. But though she could hear their pant hoot calls to one another, she didn't see them. Then Jane fell ill with malaria, which is caused by mosquito bites. Lying in her tent, burning with fever, she almost lost hope. But when the fever left her body, she tried again to get close to the chimps. More weeks and months passed, till one day, chimps let Jane see them. She stayed in the background, never hid, acted uninterested, and quietly watched. Now Jane watched every day, all day, even huddled in the rain. She saw the chimps accept the rain, not look for shelter like we do, and she kept notes all about it. You have to be patient if you want to learn about animals, she wrote. Some nights, Jane even slept on the peak to be near the tree where the chimps were sleeping. She woke at dawn and saw them slowly rise from their nests, sit for a spell, then go off to find food. You can see them sleeping in the tree. Jane named the chimps. To her, each one was different, just like us. A gray bearded chimp was the first to approach Jane. She named him David Graybeard. David Graybeard has, yes, he has taken bananas from my hand so gently 
no snatching, she wrote. David Graybeard let Jane come close. She watched him shape a stick into a tool to dig for termites. Before this, nobody knew that wild animals made tools. She watched David Graybeard eat meat. Before this, everybody thought chimps ate only plants. Jane watched the chimps when they were happy. She saw them hold hands and hug and kiss and laugh just like us. Jane watched the chimps when they were angry or scared and their hair stood on end. She saw them swagger and throw tantrums and kept out of the way. Jane watched the chimps at Kokombi Waterfall, leaping and swinging in awe and wonder at the tumbling water. Doesn't that look like fun? At night, after a supper of beans and tomatoes and onions, Jane listened to Mozart and Bach as she wrote up her notes from the day. Years of notes were piled high everywhere. Jane needed help. And so assistants came to watch and write. One day, Jane sadly left Gombe. All across Africa, forests were being cut down and the chimps were losing their home. Poachers were shooting grown chimps and kidnapping their babies to sell to laboratories, to the circus and as pets. Jane's beloved chimpanzees were in danger of becoming extinct. They needed Jane to speak for them. Jane hated to leave her friends, but she knew she must. She traveled to big cities and small towns the world over. Month after month, year after year, asking for help to save the chimps and the forest. Jane returned to the forest of Gombe whenever she could. She climbed up to the peak, calling hello to the streams and hills and trees with David Graybeard at her side. Jane watched and listened again to the pant who calls of her friends. And when she went back to civilization to speak out for the chimps, Jane carried with her the peace of the forest. The forest in Gombe, where she talked to the animals like Dr. Doolittle and walked unafraid like Tarzan and watched and wrote and opened a window for us to the worlds of chimpanzees. Thank you for being such good listeners. And you might want to know that Jane Goodall is still traveling the world telling the story about chimpanzees. But don't go anywhere. We have Miss Janice who's on her way to t read a book to you about the banana monster. Thank you again. Bye. Thank you, Sue. That was wonderful. And now we are welcoming Janice. Growing up near Toronto, animals have always had a special place in Janice's heart. Janice has been volunteering with us here at Project Chimps for about a year, working mainly in the kitchen, but also helping us on our curriculum committee. She is looking forward to volunteering in chimp care and learning as much as possible about chimpanzees. 
Janice is going to read us The Banana Monster. Good morning. Buttercup and I are here to read Banana Monster. I hope you enjoy this book. It's a fun, it's a fun little read. And it's by Peter Bentley. Banana Monster. Charlie was telling his baby brother, Chester, a story about monsters. Monsters are huge and scary, said Charlie. Oh, oh, said Chester, I hope I never meet one. Silly little Chester, chuckled Charlie. Imagine believing in monsters. Now I'm a little hungry. Time to visit his secret stash of bananas. Charlie crept to the bushes, then he stopped. Uh-oh, what was that noise? He could hear someone eating his bananas. Eek, cried Charlie. It must be a monster. Charlie ran back home to his mom. What's the matter, asked mom. I think there's a monster in the bushes, said Charlie. There aren't any monsters in the forest, Charlie, mom said kindly. Come on, let's go and see. You see him up there on his mama? Suddenly, they heard a large grunting sound. It's the monster, shivered Charlie, asleep in the bushes. Why don't you climb that tree and look, said mom. You'll be safe up there. Quietly as a mouse, Charlie started to climb. Carefully, does it. Just a little closer. At last, Charlie looked down into the bushes and saw, what do you think he saw? The monster. It was Chester, asleep after eating all of Charlie's bananas. Look at him. And that's it. Thank you for joining us. And we hope Buttercup and I and all of Project Chimps hope you can join us all on a field trip someday. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Janice. Well, thank you both Sue and Janice for sharing two great books with us this morning. It takes $22,000 per year per chimp to take care of all of their food and housing, medical care and enrichment activities. So we sure do hope that you enjoyed this program. And if you did enjoy this program, it costs $7 a day to feed one chimp and $3 a day to provide enrichment for one chimp. So for just $10, you can provide all meals and enrichment activities for one chimp for one day. Consider an annual chimp sponsorship as a gift for $250 or monthly at $23. You can check out our website to learn more about how you can visit the chimps at one of our events, field trips, or other upcoming adventures at www 
www.projectchimps.org. Thank you for joining us. And we do still have two more of these reading series coming up in the month of January on the remaining two Saturdays. So we hope to see you again. Thank you.